Well, this is kind of surprising. Uh, a viewer of the channel actually one time commented on uh, one of the videos I did in Moab saying that this area actually used to have uranium tailings uh, stored here, making it radioactive and everyone was playing in radioactive sand. And I actually didn't believe them at the time. Uh, and I never stopped here before. But when I walk around here with my uh, Radica, I'm gonna take out my Radi B20 to see if I see the same thing. But I am seeing an increase in radiation here. So that probably means that at one point in time, they did store uranium mill tailings that's probably from uh, the UMRTA that's down the street over here. And then they cleaned up the area, but now there's still some residual radiation because like almost <laughs> no matter how much they clean it up, they can't actually clean it up completely. I mean, they could probably like maybe dig down a little deeper and get the rest of it out, but it's like such a minute uh, level of increased radiation. It's not really anything to worry about. So let's uh, get some more numbers here so I can actually show you what I'm talking about. So I have the Radicode actually in my pocket down here. So it's a little close to the ground. But as you can hear, there are clicks of radiation. And usually on my trip so far, I've been getting around like between 150 and 250 background radiation. Here I'm getting around, let's see here, like 600, 500, which is a, a little bit of an increase, but nothing, nothing to worry about. It's interesting that it's here. So usually when I come into Moab, I, I see people around here um, playing in the sand, uh, parked here to just kind of hang out while they're either waiting to get into Arches National Park, which is right over here. Uh, so it's kind of, uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, fascinating that this uh, area is radioactive, like that one viewer suggested that it was. I mean, it's nothing like that bad. I mean, you could live out here your whole life and it wouldn't be dangerous to you, but it is an increased level of radiation. So it is here, but it isn't a problem. Now I haven't gone up the hill here, but I think that where they would have uh, stored all the uranium mill tailings would have been down in this area, which would have been easy to access. There's really no point in them having it up here unless they were dumping it off the train because there are train tracks up here. So it's a possibility, but so far walking around here, mapping the radiation, it seems like the majority of it is right down in this area. Now, based off of the readings I'm seeing here, I'm only seeing it go to like 85 counts per minute. The Radicode or Radicode uh, 103G is gonna be a lot more sensitive to gamma radiation. And so if there was still uh, contamination at the site, and they just chose to put all this red dirt over it, it would have shielded a little bit of the radiation where the only thing I'm going to be able to detect is actually gamma radiation, which is what the Radicode is actually really well suited for detecting. So this one picks up alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, but the Radicode, since it's a scintillation detector, detects the gamma radiation much better than this does but I'm not seeing like a huge increase in radiation here. So this place is safe. You can come here, play in the sand, do whatever you want. Just probably don't eat the dirt. Now I'm gonna go and uh, find some film photos to take because I'm still running an experiment right now where I'm irradiating some film at home. And so I'm actually getting just some, some shots on some different uh, film stocks, just kind of compare them to uh, you know, compare non-radiated uh, shots with uh, radioactive shots and see if there's any type of difference. Which, uh, there might be. I don't know. It's a, it's a long-form test. We'll see how that all works out. But anyway, I'm going to head into Moab, maybe stop by the UMRTA that's just right over here. Uh, they're actually removing a bunch of uh, radioactive uranium mill tailings and shipping them off-site. And so I've done a video about this site before, and so I'll probably just cruise by the gate or the fence and just kind of put my Geiger counter by there and see what the radiation level is at this point. It should still be pretty much the same, I'm thinking. <laughs> we'll see. So now I'm over by the UMRTA, the Uranium Mills Tailings Remedial Action Project, which is right over here. I've never stopped on this side of the road before, and as soon as I pulled over on this side, I was like, whoa, my Radica is actually showing a much higher level than I thought was out here. 
in this this spot without going out onto the restricted area that I can't go out to. So this is right on uh, Potash Road, by the way. If you're going like out to like uh, do some four wheeling or go along the the Green River, the Colorado River, whatever it is, uh, this spot, this little spot, runs like right by the UMRTA, and you can just pull over here and uh, enjoy the radiation. <laughs> I don't have enough hands. <laughs> so it looks like this is getting an increase in radiation. Like this is picking it up also. Again, probably the majority of what I'm seeing is gamma radiation because all the other stuff is probably buried. Uh, but it's interesting that it's a little, a little higher here too. Again, nothing to be concerned about. It's just something that happens with these areas. You know, this is, this used to be a huge uranium mill out here, right outside of Moab. And they've been working to clean this up, I think, for the last, I wanna say 13 years. I could be wrong on that number, but that's what's kind of stuck in my head. So, yeah, as far as I know, they're uh, nearing completion on this project. And once it's all cleaned up, I think it's gonna be turned back over to the city of Moab and they're gonna see what they wanna do with it. Yeah, but uh, a little radioactive around here, but uh, nothing too crazy. So it's just fascinating to find like a different hot spot than what I'm used to finding. Cause usually I'm used to finding stuff along the, the edge of the fence over here, but uh, not right here. But I guess this makes sense. Cause this looks like a, used to be a mining road also, or went up to the, to the area where the train is. So makes sense that it's radioactive. Oh man, that's so funny. These signs used to say danger electric fence. And I made a video about it showing that these aren't electric fences because they terminate right into the ground. There's no insulators to keep the electricity from just grounding. And I swear, maybe someone from the DOE uh, maybe saw that video or heard me complain about that to the Santa Susana people. And maybe now they changed the sign so it actually says danger static electricity from the overhead uh, power lines. So. <laughs> I just thought that was really funny. Yeah, I just came over here to get a shot of my film camera. So, see how that turns out. Not quite as wide as I usually like to go. Yeah, I have to have my hat backwards too. Um, shooting on Kodak Portra 400. And uh, let's see what the settings are. Looks like I got, uh, is it autofocus correctly? Hopefully it is. Uh, looks like uh, 1 25th of a second, 5.6. Let's see what that sounds like. Ooh, so crisp. <laughs> so this is the Nikon F5. It's a pretty cool camera. It used to cost like, um, I don't know, a little over two grand back in the 90s, and now you can find them on eBay for around $350. This so one's in pretty good condition. And it's nice having a film camera with uh, modern functions, if that makes sense. This could be a good shot. We'll see, I don't know how it's gonna look on that 800T as I keep spinning around. Tungsten balance with neon signs, sometimes they say it looks pretty good. I don't know, first time I'm shooting it.
All right, off to get some breakfast at the Jailhouse Cafe. Best place in Moab. There's also a uranium mining history museum now in Moab. And I guess one of the guys that set it up actually invited me to go out there and check it out. So if I have time today, I'll try and hit up that place too, but I don't know if I'll have enough time. Might try and do it tomorrow if I run out of time. We'll see. I would like to stop by and check it out. The admission to get into the Moab Museum was around $10, so not a big deal. I try to have enough time on the screen for all of these little plaques that I film so you can pause them and read them. This museum had a ton of mining history, which I really enjoyed. Lots of minerals have been extracted from this area which is very impressive and makes it a really cool place to walk around and explore. Not sure why they were using a fallout symbol for the radiation symbol there. These are a bunch of different minerals that uranium is found in. The museum had this Ludlum Model 3, so you can actually check the radiation from uranium ore and a uranium glazed plate and a radium clock. So that's kind of cool, gives people an idea of like what's there. And they also had a pretty extensive collection of uranium glass as well. I haven't seen any of these movies yet, but I kind of want to now. Uranium mining in the 1950s and 60s was a huge part of American culture. It was that time period's gold rush. Pretty cool museum. I like the hanging Geiger counters. <laughs> This is a mock-up of what uranium mines in the 1950s and 60s would have looked like, like some of the things you would have found in there, along with dynamite. Don't worry, it's hopefully inert. This heat map shows the density of uranium mines in the area. And it spans Utah, Colorado, and parts of New Mexico. Because of the nature of uranium deposits and how they were formed from ancient rivers or seas, usually fossils are found in or around uranium deposits. Since the fossilization of these dinosaur bones occurred in uranium deposits, they have also become a little radioactive, which makes them very easy to verify if you have a Geiger counter. Of course, some of the radiation in this display of these different uranium minerals does get out, but it is nothing harmful. You can be by it all day and it's totally fine. The Radicode 103G 
actually picks up a lot more of this radiation since it's more sensitive to gamma radiation. So that's why it sounds way more active around these different uranium ore samples in this display case. Again, nothing harmful, it's just a more sensitive detector is all. In this case is more uranium ore samples where they're showing off the fluorescence of uranium ore, or certain uranium ores, under ultraviolet light. This is typically where uranium is found in the different formations of rock, shown in the yellow. Now, I was very fascinated to see this. This is a map of the Mavita mine, which is a very famous mine in the Moab area that yielded huge quantities of high-grade uranium ore. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.